What is up guys, Free No One here, welcome to my live reaction and review for The Promised Neverland Chapter 142, The Promised from 1000 Years Ago Part 2. Alright guys, so we're pretty much in the middle of a flashback to 1000 years ago where we're talking to, um, uh, I believe it's Julius Rattery. Um, last time we saw, uh, uh, Archduke Lewis had come through and just slaughtered everyone. Julius has dropped his twin and said, Look, I wish to talk to your king. And he's gone. And he's, as we know, he was at the thing with mm, preparing to make a wish. So I think he hadn't, he hadn't made the wish yet, but uh, he had basically made his demand. And one of the demand was, I believe, for the demon. To bring in the best tasting dish he's ever had. That was something that we saw. Uh, besides that, we don't know what's going to go down, what the actual wish is. But let's get straight into this week's chapter. Let's do it. Reporting in, Archduke Lewis has appeared in the Southwest Fortress. The Rattery Forces stronghold has been annihilated. General Rattery is almost, also most likely, an urgent report of a disaster. So this is a flat... Going back to what went down just after that fight. I'm going to search for him. I'll go too. Alright. If he's still alive, we may not have much time. Besides, if the entire force did end up being wiped out, we don't recover the corpses, they'll eat them. Wait. Wait. So he's walked in. Julius! We're so glad. Are you injured? Sorry for worrying you all. But more importantly, I have something... I'd like you to hear right away. Okay. Chapter 142. The promise from a thousand years ago. 2. You want us to reconsider that proposal? Or gather around for the last round of discussion before? That one about offering up a part of the humans in order to forge peace with them. However, I thought we decided against that before. But if we present them once, that that will be the end of it. We have this method which by doing so just once, we can sever interactions with them for eternity. Julius. This is certainly preferable to losing thousands or tens of thousands of soldiers and people onwards. Okay, so it looks like sacrifice a few to save the many. That's his general o overall plan. Okay. I, I've had enough with sacrificing. In one night, in just one night, we were all wiped out. If we offered, if we just offer up a small amount, all this, all this sacrifice will end right then and there. But Julius, if we can't do this, the minus bloodshed will never end. We have to finish this for the sake of mankind. Not soon. Not someday, but right here, right now, all of us. It certainly is a painful choice to make, but this is a constructive compromise. It is a price we must pay. Okay. I beg of you, everyone, please accept this plan. But what about all of the suffering that will happen to those we offer up? Will their offspring Generation after generation follow after them. All for the sake of our peace. The pain and suffering they have to shoulder will just continue to swell with this one singular decision. Okay? Is that not the case? I've lost many soldiers too. My father and brother were eaten. All the others lost their families as well. Countless numbers of my comrades have been eaten by them. But even so, you and all of us here, have we been fighting all this time for the future that we want? Even though all of the losses and all they robbed of us, of, haven't we come this far together because we haven't given up? So, basically, look, we don't like this idea. Stop, stop it. You're wrong. Those pretty words 
and those illusions. I'm fed up with all of it. What's so wrong with casting away some strangers for the sake of my comrades? I'm doing the right thing here. I'm... Then why do you look like you're in, like you're in so much pain, Julius? I know that you don't want to cast them away either. You think about your nation and your troops more than anyone else. You're straightforward and kind. For that reason, you feel much more responsible for others and push on ahead all by yourself. Okay. But weren't you the one who wanted it more than anyone else? Peace for all mankind. Victory without compromise. I'm sorry that you had to suffer alone. For your sake too, I just, we just can't accept that proposal. What you need right now is rest. You must be exhausted. Rest up a little. Okay? You're wrong. You're wrong. This is the very best peace we can achieve. I want to reach an understanding with all of you. Otherwise, if I can't just get you to consent to this, I see. No matter what I do, you won't change your minds. It's a shame. Honestly, what a shame. Okay, so what's going on? An enemy attack! <gasps> Damn it, they're coming in! Julius, you! You betrayed us? No way! He betrayed them? No fucking way! Are you serious? I have already reached an agreement with their king. Not bad at all. If we seize control of our food storage, we can command our and govern our subjects more effectively. We will agree to your peace. Okay. So this is an agreement he made with the king of the demons. Please forgive me. There was no other way. You have become an obstacle towards peace. Therefore, as much as it pains me to do this, you are humanity's first cattle. So Julius is the one who set up the system. So the guy who's Minerva set up the system. Alright. Now go on and become a foundation for peace. So the demons are... It's okay. This was the sole correct path. Somebody has to end up being the victim. Someone, somebody has to be the one to finish this. It's over now. The human world will be saved. See, I've saved it. Alright, so now we're going back. You want the world to be divided into two. Okay, I will grant your wish. However, I will request a reward as well. It's the price for granting your wish. No matter what he wants, do not refuse. I've decided... Okay, so what did he decide on? First, Ivek, from you. I would like the finest meat you will ever grow. Okay. You can make them, right? Humans, at farms. I want to eat better meat than you or your king ever would. I understand. Alright, so that's the deal. He has to provide meat so good... That no one else can touch it. Now then, next. Next up is Julius. For you, once this is done, everything will be over. I can go home. Whatever it takes, even if I must give my life here. Okay. From now on, you will be the gatekeeper. Huh? Your role will be that of mediator. You are to preserve peace between the two worlds. Okay, so that's... How the Ratari clan came to be in the position they are. Because Julius was made gatekeeper. So gatekeeper basically, he's the one who controls the peace. He's like an ambassador, so to speak. The promise that you and the king made. So that we may not hunt each other. Let us separate the world. You are not to break each other's customs. If the human side doesn't play a part, you won't be able to rest assured, right? So your clan... Where humans will play that role. Forever. Yes. You and your offspring, generation after generation, will be stuck in that vortex of fate. 
Okay, so basically they're the ambas ambassadors. You can't escape from the friends that you tossed away, nor from your fate. You too will become a foundation for peace. Okay, so that's how the... Alright, so that's answering a lot of questions. One, the promise that Ivirk had to give, we don't know if he's coming with that. Um, but... How the Rattaris came to be in that position of power is that based on the original promise, because mm, has said to him, Look, you and your generation after generation after generation, that is the role you're going to have, whether you like it or not. Sure, Emma, what is your wish? However, now we're going back to Emma. All right, so now we're going back to Monotom. All right, he's saying, Sure, Emma. What is your wish? However, I will request a reward as well. Okay, so the question is going to be, what is his reward? A reward. Mr. Minerva Penn talked about that, but with such simple-mindedness, he really does seem like a kid. An existence of a higher dimension that has transcended time and space, that one time divided the human and demon worlds. What is he thinking of? What does he want? I can't read him at all. Almost like some fickle god. The reward, hmm, would have to be something important. Their ambition, their desire, what they long for. What I would want is something that is important to the other party. Okay, so Emma's like, hmm, so he's kind of explaining to it. Will you make a wish despite that? What do you wish for? Uh, we've got uh, doing a flashback. Look here. Three wolves. Promises made with mm cannot be overwritten. Two. The promise made with mm cannot be broken. Three. You abso absolutely must not refuse him his reward. Our wish will be quite simple. Just two things. My wish is. In the promise from a thousand years ago, the world was divided. Based on that, Okay, so it looks like Emma's making a wish. I want all cattle children to cross over to the human world. And after that, for it to be completely impossible to pass between the two worlds. I will grant that wish. But at what price? Ooh, that's a pretty big wish, man. That is a massive wish. But anyway, guys, look, we're gonna go, we're gonna hang on for a second, and we're gonna jump straight into the review. Alright, guys, so chapter 142 of The Promised Neverland. We wrap up the original story of the original promise. And the original promise was for the world to be split into two. Humans to be on one side, um, and demons to be on the other. Obviously, with the fact that the agreement they came to with the king um, that Julius came with the king to leave a certain number of people there uh, he ends up betraying his friends and they become the first cattle so to speak the, the second part of it was for Ivek the demon he had to make fulfill some of the, of the reward as well and he's what he needs to give mm, the finest meat that they have ever created. Which they can create through the farms. So I think this is hinting at what mm, is going to ask for Emma in return. Okay. That's what I'm really curious about. Because we know that Julius is uh, basically what he was asked to do was he had to be the gatekeeper. That is how the Rateri clan came to be in their position. Basically, they are like, you could basically call them an ambassador, right? So they are there to maintain the peace between the human world and the demon world, right? That is basically what's going down, right? So they became basically the ambassador, and because of that, they're in quite a powerful position. And they've taken, you know, advantage of that situation to basically make themselves quite powerful, quite well off. And that's why James Ratali and all them fought, have been fighting so hard to make sure the promise doesn't get undone. 
because they want to stay like that because that's just basically how they built their fame their fortune and everything like that and they don't want that taken away from them we end up coming back and then basically we find out that you know Julius actually sacrifices his friends for this um, so next what ends up happening we go back to Emma Emma's with mm, we don't know the name the name of the thing of the actual god demon and he basically says to her look for me to grant you a wish it's gonna have to be something that's important to the other party not maybe not you in particular but to the other party so with even with all this are you sure you still want to go through with the wish and Emma goes through with the wish and the wish being, I want all cattle children to cross over to the human world. And after that, for it to be completely impossible to pass between the two worlds. Alright? And he goes, okay, I'll grant that wish. But what is he going to ask for? I think we do know. I think the biggest thing that we heard from the very start of the series... And when I say the very start, I mean the very start. Emma, Ray, and Norman are the three prime meat. They are the best of the best. The reward that Ivek was asked was to bring him the most, the best meat they could ever potentially create. Right? Basically, not even their king or anyone has ever eaten before. He said, you can do that through your farms, right? There's a hint. Hint. Emma, Ray, Norman. They're from the farm. They were also known to be the next batch to go through for the Tafari, which is this big festival, which they're the biggest thing that they're trying to do is prepare the dish, the better world's greatest dish for him. So, question's going to be, what is he going to ask for? I'm very curious. Is he going to ask for Emma's life? Is he going to ask for somebody else's life? Is he going to ask for Norman's life? We don't know. There's a very... There's a, it seems like there's a lot going on in the background that's led up to this very, very specific moment. And I'm very curious about to see how this is going to play out next week. But anyway, guys... That is all for me. Overall, for this chapter, I'm going to give it four stars. It was a very good chapter. Very solid. Not super hype. Not super exciting or anything like that. But we're getting answers. And we're getting down to the very nitty gritty. Emma's made the promise. The question now is, what's the reward that he's going to ask for? That's the real question. But anyway, guys. Overall, that is... It's four stars. I absolutely love the chapter. I'm looking forward to what's coming up in the next few chapters. But anyway, guys, that is all for me. Let me know in that comment section below what you guys thought. Did you like it? Didn't like it? All that kind of jazz. And as always, guys, I'm free no one. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you guys next time for another live reaction and review. Peace. Mm -hmm.